She's the best. All right, so I can go off of this phone. All right, so let's do, we're just going to do, hey, guys, sorry we had a little bit of audio video problem here, but I think we're on the phone. It's very different to teach to yourself when you look at each other. Let's do a check. Hey, would you walk out here a little bit? You're in the middle here, so go this way. Just go kind of slow. All right, boom. You know, that's your office, your, your uh, outside. Okay, that should work. Just keep walking, please. Very good. Excellent, excellent. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick this up real quick. And uh, everybody get a drink of water, and we're going to go forward, Mr. Nate. No, 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 that's fine. Just leave everything where it is. Oh, the cord. Yeah. We don't need this. That's right. Here we go. Go. There we go. Let's go right about here. All right. There goes your phone. All right. Let's see what we got now, guys. All right. We'll just angle it down a little bit more. Okay, if we bump into that, boy, that's going to be heck, isn't it? All right. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Well, hey, everybody. Boy, it sure is great seeing you in person. And, uh, boy, what a wonderful idea to have a virtual ITC. I hope everybody's safe and feeling good and stay away from the 19 uh, uh, and, and healthy. Um, God bless everybody. I'd like to say, again, happy birthday to Grandmaster Norris and, and show my respect not only – to uh, Grandmaster Norris, but of course, uh, Master Aaron Norris, Master Kenny Gallagher, the board of directors, the wonderful black belts and students we have in the United Fine Arts Federation organization. I uh, simply we are blessed, guys, to be able to be part of such a great organization. In case maybe you don't know me, my name is Master H, uh, Stephen Hammersley. Um, I'm an eighth degree black belt uh, in uh, uh, Chuck Norris system. I'm a third degree black belt in Krav Maga Force. I'm currently the director of Krav Maga Force. Uh, you, excuse me, UFAF Krav Maga. And uh, so uh, what I also uh, am head of the affiliate program. So I got a lot of hats that I wear. Uh, the Krav Maga is such a wonderful, wonderful program. Uh, we call the CNS, the Krav Maga, and the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu three legs of the three-legged stool. You know, three legs, it's a nice stool. It's a very excellent foundation. So today it's going to be my honor to present to you uh, some of the skills and drills that we use in UFAP, Krav Maga, and hope that maybe you'll join us sometime uh, if you haven't already and, uh, and learn some of the fantastic uh, self-defense principles, uh, ideas, and, and, and bring up your level of ability and percentage-wise if you ever are uh, accosted, attacked by a criminal in the street. First, let me get, uh, introduce you to my wife. This is Miss Erin. Miss Erin is a uh, second-degree United Fine Arts Federation black belt. This is Hammersley. Very nice to have you here today, my dear. And this is my son, uh, Mr. Nathan Hammersley. Uh, he's a first degree UFAP probably guy. Mr. Nate, glad to have you here as well. They're going to help us demonstrate some stuff. So if you have a partner, that's fantastic. If you don't, you can do some air drills. In fact, we're going to start off with a really neat little drill. So get your partner, stand up. Already gave you enough break by taking too much time to get on. Our art is key. So uh, let's go ahead. You know, even though it's probably guy, we say no rings, no rituals, right? Uh, and no rules, well, we're going to still show our respect, right? So we're going to bow a little bit, but again, in the middle, absolutely. And uh, one, two, three, huzzah. Like so this drill's really good. So what happens in a lot of drills in any kind of martial arts is, you know, everybody's afraid to touch their wrists, take choreograph, everything's so choreographed. So, you know, somebody's here and I do this, and maybe I'm, oh man, you hit me, whatever. Ah, oh, my crap, my God, we don't want to hurt each other. And sometimes, even in, no matter what drill you're doing, you know, you could have bobbed and you should have weaved and things happen. But, we need to be able to take a little bit, okay, and give a little bit. The criminal on the street, he don't care. He's going to have a bad day. He don't care if you, you, you react to that strike and you say, oh, my gosh, something's hurting. So, you know, we're not going to go too hard. We're going to watch who we hit. We're going to stay on the inner thigh and the outer thigh, okay? okay? All right. So we're going to have our hands up like this. We're going to move around. We're going to stay in this area, maybe the camera. And we're going to fight each other. I have situational awareness. We're going to be popping those legs. We're going to take a pop. Come on, guys. Let's go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Oh. And you can block, yes, you can block. You can block, you can block. Let's move, let's move, let's move, let's move, let's move. Move, 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 move. Move, move, move. Move, 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 move. Move in time. Okay, breathe. That's when you're going to add another target, so you have to be more aware. You're going to hit the inner or outer thigh and the shoulder. You ready? Breathe. I mean, you got to work hard. This is a go for it time. Okay, let's go. Ooh, ooh. Uh, anyway, stop. No, just kidding. Anything's fair, Crawford. Ah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can block. You can block. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you 
Oh, that wasn't my inner outer die just kid. I just lock it up, follow on. Lock it up, face each other. I don't know if they can see you. Yeah, they can't come this way with the guys. Good, lock those ankles. This way, there you go. Scoot this way a little bit. Very good. Good, all right, guys, good. We're really working fast. All right, so we're gonna do spin ups. But these are a little bit different. We wanna add a horse lord, Krav Maga content to every drill that we do. Everything. Add a kick, a punch, an elbow, a knee strike. Make sure you're always aware. So your hands are gonna be up, they're gonna go down. When they come up this time, Mr. Nate's gonna to try to pop this air into the side, the head, the front of the head. He's gonna do a cover block lino, cover block shell, on the left, on the right, or a helmet. You don't know those? It's a very natural reaction. It's like, oh my gosh. So we're not gonna to try to snap it out here right now. This, this, and this. Right or left, right or right, helmet, and shell. Here we go. Get it, man. Come on, eight, one. Come on, fast. Come on, quick. Two. Let's see. Come on, put up three. That's it. Come on, block. Good. Now add a counter strike after you lock this here. Add a counter strike after you lock. Boom, there you go. Block and count. Boom, boom, there you go. Come on, switch it over. Switch it over. Aaron's in. Good. And these block. And then counter. Block and counter. There you go. Zoom, 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 boom. Eight. Seven, six, five. Now come up. I don't care who knows what. Be aware. Everything's up. No, 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 no. See, now come up. This time, don't you stop. Good. I don't care if it's a fight. That's what you think. You punch, you block. You block the counter. Really? Come on, go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Switch over on the plank, everybody. We're going to go to plank position. Plank position. This time, we're from that plank position, we're going to bring our right elbow way up. Aim it at the semen. Ready? Drop it down, do it eight times. One, two, three, four, five, nice, seven, eight, switch the other way up, way up, drop down. One, two, three, working good. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold that plank. Good, hold that plank, get that back straight. I want you to pretend like you have a piece of chalk in your belly button, and so that chalk is on the ground. I want you to draw a circle with that chalk. That means from here, you're going to rotate the body. Go ahead, make it Oh, roll your body. There you go. Eight, seven, other direction. Six, five, four. One leg up. Get as high as you can. Good, good, good. Take the opposite hand and shoot it out. Ooh, take the opposite hand if you can and shoot it out. Oh, my gosh. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Switch to the other side. Oh, man. Just stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. Now, everybody switch down. Good. Turn around. Have your feet facing me on your hernies. Whenever we get up, we're going to go through this in just a minute. It doesn't matter what we do on the mat. We never rise to the occasion. We fall back to our training. So if we get up any time different, every time different, I should say, and then you want to get up correctly. There's many times, many different ways of getting up correctly. We're going to show you basic turn to the side hand as the bridge, slide the leg in, come with this or this. Stiff arm I like, rhino, and we're going to move away. Here we go. Ready to get up, pop it up quickly, and back down. We're going to do this four times. Go back down the same way you got up. Ready up. There's two. And back down. Try to scoot right back into the same way. Ready, three. Good. And then we're going to break it down. On this one, break it down in case you've never gotten up correctly. Think about it. If I'm the bad guy, I'm standing here. If, you're, if I move, she moves. She gets this guard in between. All right? She kicks me off. Boom! She has a little bit of time. She rolls over on her hands and knees. And look what I'm going to stay. Wham! Wham. So instead of that, when she sees the opportunity, and I got to get used to my little parameters here on this teeny little phone. She gets the opportunity. She kicks me off. Boom, I'm moving back right in. Yeah. And she gets up correct. Let's put that scenario. Go down like here. All right, so I'm here. I'm going to go. Boom, I'm going to come up. She's ready to go to work. Good job, guys. Let's give him a hand. Give yourself the hand. Yeah. All right, so we run a little bit late. We got a little bit of a warm up. We got to turn the air on. We're in that's normally closed today. So we got, it. oh, it's probably about 95 degrees here in sunny Florida. Yeah, it feels good though, doesn't it? Get a little sweat going. Guys, can you walk inside for So my goal today, my goal today is to bring to all of UFAF a framework. And the framework is going to make it easier, and it should be easy. You know, in a chaotic situation, you go to tunnel vision, get that adrenaline. Your gross motor skills is all you have. Your fine motor skills, they're out there. If you have something really fancy or not necessarily 
that is natural reaction, then you have had to practice that thing a million times for it to come out. For instance, if someone grabs me by the throat and I do some exotic, which would work good for some people, I think everything's great. If it works, it works. That's number one. Get home safe, right? That's what Krav Maga is all about. Keep the ego in the pocket. You see danger, you stay away from it. You get back in the car, whatever you got to do. But if you're attacked, you win at all costs. And you make sure that you get home safe. So I'm standing here um, with the, the type of drills and, and, and techniques I'm trying to give you to help you retain these drills and to get that information. Because it's easy. Once again, it should not be hard. It's, it's, it's martial arts, but with a different mindset. So if we have a framework and you follow that guideline, and I think you and I want to hear from you if you don't think this is something that's going to help you or if you have any, um, anything to add to it or something that you don't quite understand, you get a hold of it. But with this framework, what's going to happen is under that stress, under that uh, chaotic situation, you will not procrastinate, you will not hesitate. And y'all, here's, here's the word that I use. You will go to work. All right? The way you go to work is very important. We're going to start off with, number one, 98.9999% of all self-defense situations can be taken care of with simply situational awareness. Situational awareness. Where am I at? What am I doing? Not, not being paranoid. Not walking scared? Absolutely not. Know my entrance, know my exits, know my environment. What do I have on the walls that I can pull down and introduce to your nose? <laughs> what can I pick up and let you borrow that upside your head? Just kidding. Now, I'm not, look, I love the art of fighting or the idea of it, the science of it, how it works, techniques and the skills, but I'm a warrior of peace, guys, warrior of peace. But if my family's involved, or somebody I love, and I love myself too, then it's going to be a hard, hard time for you to to take me out. I'm going to get, I'm going to leave it on the leave it on the deck. It's it's not going to be easy. So, situational awareness is coupled together with your mental mindset. When I think of somebody that's strong and has a real strong mental mindset, I think of our military, our first responders, the police. I think of all those people that put their life on the line and they've had this happen to them where their training pulled them through. But more than their training, the training of their mind. So physical skills, absolutely. Mental skills, number one. Awareness. If you hear noises over here, you're in a restaurant, pay attention to it. What's going on over there? You have to get involved. Maybe it's time to get out. You see somebody coming in, acting nervous. One guy comes in, he's got a it's uh, 90 degrees and he's got a trench coat on, sums up, pay attention to it. And that's gonna keep you out of a lot of problems. But when the stuff hits the fan, as they say, we wanna make sure that we can uh, turn the fan off quick. All right? So again, mental mind, this is what I tell in my mind. I go, okay, my warrior mindset is this. And I told you about, you know, it's because, you know, it's for my family, it's for, you know, people that I love. And, it, and, and, it, and it's for right. It's, it's for doing the right thing. You know, these are criminals and they're trying to do the wrong thing by hurting people. I don't know, maybe it'll come an opportunity or a time where I, I have to step in to put people I don't even know. I mean, we don't know what we're gonna be faced with. We don't think about what is, is a, a possibility. We wanna think of something that's a probability. You know, what is it? It most of the time happens. We've been studying this. We're going to get into that in just a minute. Uh, what is most of the time, what does that attacker do in the street? Whether it be empty hand, knife, or gun. So back to the mindset. So my mindset when this occurs, when this chaotic situation occurs, I, I think to myself, if, if you break my arm or if you cut it off, I'm going to take it away from you. And I'm going to beat you back in the head with it. If I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to pull your ear off and stick it in your hip pocket so you can hear me in your hiding. Now, I know I just trying to make a little bit of a joke and make it kind of fun. And I hope you enjoyed that. 
But if you get the picture, it's focused. So when you hit the bag, when you train, when you're working out, train hard, work hard. When I'm warming up, it's, I, I still have that mental mindset. I don't have to hit hard to have that mental mindset. You'll see it on different people say, you ever seen Mr. Norris's face when he was competing? Or when he steps on the mat to teach? Oh my gosh. It goes from Grandmaster Norris to Grandmaster Norris on the mat. It's just amazing. My instructor, uh, uh, Grandmaster Ken Gallagher, same way. It's like, whoop. And so I try to follow those great mentors of mine. So anyway, situational awareness, mental mindset. Very, very important. So no matter what you do, things are, are going to happen some of the time. Not all the time. You know, hardly anybody ever really gets attacked. Look at it. Attacks don't happen that much. Nowadays, it's kind of crazy, but they do happen. And so when these things happen, again, you're going to be caught off. It could be even like an ambush, okay? You're going to be caught off guard, so back to the training, like we were talking about before. So when we build this framework, and this is an unarmed framework, so we're going to get to it. This is after you've done everything else that you could possibly do to stay away from the situation. Again, the guy starts walking toward me. I bumped into him accidentally. He's mad at his wife. You know, they had an argument this morning. He's going to get out of the car, and he just keeps getting out of the car. He's 12 foot tall. He's four foot. I don't care. And he's walking toward me. I know he's not walking toward me to exchange insurance information because he's the precursor. Hey, man, what's the problem? He's spitting. He's enraged. His face is red. His hands are clenched. And he's walking. Big. So my hands go up and go, hey, bud, get back in the car as I'm getting in the car. I call the police. And, of course, this goes a long way when people are watching and filming things. And think about that no matter what we do. Because it's born a law, especially if you win, people like to sue, <laughs> okay? Even though they were the aggressor. So those precursors are what we're looking for. So if that happens, I get back in my car. All right, but what if my car's like, what if I can't get away? What if I can't create distance? My hands are up. This is the universal language. I don't care if you are from planet Zentar and you are total alien to wherever you're at. I do this and probably from the people that are aliens from planet Zentar would know it means what? Correct. Stop. Get back. I do it confidently, but I don't do it cocky. Like, you know, very cocky. Okay. So as I'm giving my verbal de-escalation, hey man, get back in the car. Nice shirt you have. I can we can go through motor loop and all kinds of things. We don't have time for that today. If I can't, if the attack is imminent, and I know it's imminent, then I have to have this. The third part to this before we get to the, the framework is my rules of engagement. What are your rules of engagement? Do you have to think about when you're going to hit? Do you have to think, or does somebody have to hit you first before you respond? Oh, really? Well, I like to fight those people. Let me hit you first. When I fall full contact, I always want to get first hit in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll share mine with you. Mine with you. My rules of engagement, those precursors are out. The guy's walking to me, he's raged, he's spitting, he's coming to me. I can't do anything else. I already talked about that. Why do I let him in my space? I don't. I'm going to attack the attack. That's right. I'm going to catch him. We're using this is 95% is what they call the haymaker or drunk punch. So let's use that today. There's all kinds of ways people can attack you. We'll use that today. All right. So here comes this great big drunk punch. Am I going to wait? No way. No way. I'm going to move in. I'm going to attack the attack. When I do that, I catch him off guard. If this hand right here was a baseball and I brought it back here to throw it, I start getting my momentum. I use my body weight and boom, I release it. So I'm going from zero miles an hour to 100 miles an hour, let's say. If I catch you here, I don't care how much you wound it up and how much you got. In fact, I'd like you to have more force going forward because I'm going to meet that force. And when I meet that force, it's going to do damage. Now, this is what we call a scheduled attack. Master H, what's a scheduled attack? I don't care if I see it coming. If I see it coming, I wrote it down. It was just a very quick schedule. Look, you're going to schedule a punch to you in exactly 1.3 seconds. It may take more. When I try to de-escalate, the guy's increasing. I can't get out. He's increasing his distance for me. Again, with the precursor, I can't get out. He's walking toward me. So I have more time to schedule this attack. So we're going to break down different attacks two different ways, or attacks two different ways. 
scheduled attack, non-scheduled attack. All of us can run the non-scheduled attack. Usually the people that run in the non-scheduled attack, that's when you're standing here like this, boom, and somebody hits you. All right, you're in line, somebody blindsides you, ambushes you, all right? That's a non-scheduled attack. But you should have been more aware. <laughs> but sometimes, no matter how aware you are, that stuff happens. But I think your awareness skills would definitely lower the percentage of that happening greatly, I think, to see that. So scheduled attack, non-scheduled attack. Think about that. Now, we're working down our framework. Our framework, we talked about rules of engagement, we talked about mental mindset, and I could go on for hours, but we only have an hour. And we talked about environmental or situational awareness, both in your environment, your situation, okay? Now the attack happens. We're gonna use that punch. Snake, you might have to just go ahead and take the gloves off. So this punch, I'm gonna teach this skill, and I'm gonna throw some what I like to call nuggets out there which are gonna raise your percentage because I don't care, I've watched so much YouTube stuff and the person, he throws the punch haphazardly or they hold the gun very still. And that's great for learning. But the cool thing about Krav Maga is it's drills where nothing's real but real. But you have to make your drills as realistic as possible with different lighting, music. Oh, we go, we have all kinds of different ways. We even take baby shampoo and it's fun, okay? We try to stress, we have stress drills, we have cardio drills, we have drills, drills, drills to try to put you in an environment where you are not comfortable. We don't want you comfortable. But of course you have to learn the skill first, okay? So when this person, just pull your arm back, come on out, Nate. Okay, so he's pulling his arm out. Let me hear, let me just turn this way a little bit. So I want you to use this right here, all right, the forearm. And I want you to put that forearm in the bicep, in the bicep. Okay, now we have a rhino, and this is part of the 360 drill. 360 drill is here, okay? And what that means is, I'm gonna take care of the immediate threat, which is this punch, and the future threat is that other hand, or him headbutting me, or him kicking me, get it? Immediate threat, future threat. If I just take care of the immediate threat, boom, here comes the next punch, boom. So if I can, and most of the time you can, take care of both, immediate threat and future threat. So, this comes around, my form's gonna go right through his bicep. My hand is gonna hit him in the face. I like a nice palm deal here. You can use a uh, punch to the throat. You can probably go to the eye gouge. These are what we call our tools when we go to work. Your combatives. So it's up to you. In order to make a little contact to make this, so Mr. Nate can take a little shot, okay? And I can take a little shot, but I don't wanna hit him in the face, correct? Now, if we put full face headgear on, then that's a different training. But I want to hit right here. So I make the contact, but of course, that's where I really want to be. Sometimes here, and again, I'm going to get into that in just a little bit why. All right? So the immediate threat and the future threat at the same time, if at all possible. And I want to attack the attack. So he's back here. He comes in. My hands are up. I talked about it. I waited too long. I took the full blunt. So this is what happens out here. I go to block. He hits you. It drives me this way. And he continues. And now I got a different problem. If I see a punch, I say, thank you. If you grab my arm, thank you. If you grab it by the throat, thank you. I know what you're gonna do. If I do this, now I don't know what you're gonna do. If I do this, he grabs me, and I do this, boom, boom, boom. Well, then I know what I'm gonna do. You got my point. So back to the punch. He's coming in, watch what I do here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see me, come on over here. Are you coming in again? <laughs> I'm coming in, you okay, Nate? I know he is. We never say we're not okay in Krav Maga, just kidding. Oh, man. So what I'm doing, I want you to see this. Let's turn this way over here. I'm in here, and I'm in here, but look at my head. Look at my chin. I'm not up here. I'm my little turtle show. I'm like Master Creator, TNT, my brother, Master Creator. Chin down, shoulders up. So if that other, and I'm in this form sitting here, this is here. This is not a long arm. So I'm inside. I'm moving in. We have forward motion. Remember, attack the attack. I'm going to work after that. So this is a scheduled attack. You saw that. It is off a hate maker, which is very common. Instead of blocking out here and trying to not do anything else or block and then strike, I want to block with strike. And I want to be in here because if I hit here, I'm in close. If I'm here, it's very hard for him to counter. I'm taking him off balance. I'm overwhelming, shocking, all force, force, force. Never, once you go to work, you never, ever back up. It's too the point of what we call our objectives. We have three objectives. So he throws the punch, 
Now I'm in here. I'm over this way. My objectives are one of three things. Control, incapacitate, or terminate. Control. Uh, somebody I meet at a party or at a dinner. Uh, maybe you're a police officer and you have to use a control move or uh, someone in corrections officer. I, I don't know. That's not me. I teach those guys. Um, so, but let, let's go with uh, a friend that maybe is, is out of control a little bit. So if he steps in with that punch, boom. Yeah, I can keep hitting him in the face. But I can just go here and then from there, I can simply do an arm drag, maybe come back here and say, hey, buddy, I don't know. It's up to you. But I didn't take it out. I'm thinking of control. He throws it in. I'm moving in here. Boom, bam. I just pop. Hey, back off. So I, you know, there's a time for control. We need to have that. And I can show many different, different kind of control, arm bars and that kind of stuff. But that's not really our major thought process. But we need to make sure we address that because those things can happen. Okay? The second one is going to be more important. These are objectives again. The second one, no, stay here. The second one is incapacitate. That means I'm going to make this person, whether they run off because they're in pain, uh, um, I, I took their knee out, I knocked them out, I choked them out, whatever it is that I do, they can't continue the fight. And, and remember this, I'm not trying to stand in front of this person. And you'll see when we get to the end of this, I'm not trying to stand in front of this person and spar. But as soon as he does that, if I'm here, oh, ah, 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 I'm, I'm leaving the scene. I want to get home. Again, it's not a ring fight. And I love competition. I like doing competitions, no doubt about it. That, I, I have a little switch, and I want you to switch your switch today. And know this isn't competition. So incapacitation, a good headbutt, eye gouge, a little knee strike, whatever it takes to render this person not able to continue the fight. Even if you knock them out and they hit the ground or you knock them off, when you see the escape, then you take it. That's your opportunity to get out. The third objective would be um, termination. You know, it, 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 I said, you can't think of an easier, nicer, that's a nice way of saying I'm gonna break your neck, right? And, and, and I would never do that, and I hope there's no kids out there. Kids, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, think about this, at 9-11 guys, and we do have kids crying, God, we stay away from termination for sure, and I'm gonna hit real brief you guys. 9-11 um, box cutters, people on the, on the what a terrible, I wasn't there, I don't know what happened, but I know it wrecked, and it crashed into that, into that field, and a lot of great people lost their lives, and they tried to do something about it. I don't know if they had the, the awareness, the mental mindset, and the skills to be able to take care of that situation. It doesn't take a lot. I don't know if anybody there had training. I, I, I really don't. Some of you may know. But I know that that is possibly one of the objectives that we have to come to, possibly. So let's start. Scheduled attack or non-scheduled attack? This is after awareness. Stuff hit the fan. Nope. Number two is to take care of the immediate threat. And the future threat, because there's going to be, hardly anybody hits one time and goes away. That's what we do a lot of times in training, not in crop. This guy's going to hit you. He's going to pull a knife out after that. After you take the knife with him, he's going to pull it. Always assume that every bad guy has two friends with him. They're packing a knife. They're packing a gun. They got one here. Always assume that. Okay? There's no doubt about it. So after I take care of that immediate threat, future threat, the next part is to go to work. What is my objective? My objective in this class is going to be incapacitation. And then the final thing is to disengage. Okay? So let's go back here. Here we're going to do, guys, remember, forearm to the bicep. Right here, Nate. And I'm going to forearm to the bicep. I'm attacking, attack. I'm not turning the side. I'm moving in. My body is forward. Attack, and attack. So he comes in, just come in slowly. I'm coming in. Boom. It's going to be here. I go to work. If you want to grab here and knee strike, this is my half clinch. Make sure you clinch. Don't rest your hand on clinch. Knee strike to the Bruin, and you're not pushing it back, but you're force moving forward is what's necessary. So I'm not trying to push them like this. I'm driving with skill. <clears throat> the hammer fist in. If I see the eyes, I got to the chin or punch. Then I'm going to disengage. Because right now, this individual, in my mind, in my training drill right now, is incapacitated. So now that I'm going to leave and disengage, where's my exit? It may be over there. Nine times out of ten, you watch, you'll back up, disengage. Well, what if that was traffic? So be aware, you have to have an your mind has to go to the self-defense and, and, and what we'll call a, a, a red light and then back to the green light. Back to getting back, seeing what's going on. Control yourself back down. 
Okay, so when I disengage, I don't want to walk in traffic, walk off a cliff somewhere, whatever, whatever. So I finish here, boom, boom. My present is going to be probably a knee kick because his knee was there. I'm going to back up. I'm going to take a few steps. If I can run, if that's what's going to help me out, I'm going to run. I'm going to get to my car. But if I'm in a situation, let's say I know my exit's over here, my body, uh, there's a wall right here. I'm going to look and look for those people that are probably with him. I'm going to assume they're there. I hope they're not. But I'm going to assume they're there. I'm going to assume they have a gun. I'm going to assume they have a knife, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to look to the right, to the left, maybe do a rear peek. A lot of our tier one guys love the tier, rear peek. And I'm with it, especially when it comes to handguns and carving and stuff. So my hands are going to be up always. Take a peek, take a peek, disengage, and then find my exit if I lost it or if there's a new one, or again, come back to the awareness of the situation that I'm in now. I dropped this guy. So he's out here. Let's go through it one time. He's throwing the haymaker punch. I'm moving in. Forearm, palm heel at the same time. Same time. Same time. And this, boom, moving in. Not turning sideways. Attack the attack. When this happens, I go to my objective. My objective for you guys this time is incapacitation. And I'm moving in. Feeling mental mindset, warrior mindset. What do you see? Oh, I see a nice chin. I'm moving it. Headbutt. Anything that's illegal in the UFC. That's what we use first. Knee strike. Ah, 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 ah. And I think I'm done. I'm going to disengage. Now let's drop that knee right here. Look around. Find your exit. Be aware. De escalate. See what's going on. Ms. Hampton, come up and demonstrate it, please. We're going to do it three times. Give it your partner. We'll break it down. You're right over here, man, where I was. Nate's going to make the attack. Here we go. All the way through. Go. Very good. One more time. She gets out. Good. Back up. Good job, Ms. Nate. Good job, Ms. Nate. Right over here, guys. Okay, so that was a scheduled attack. What's the difference in the non-scheduled attack? I should stay out. Is that you got hit. So that's when your warrior mindset's really got to kick in. You got stunned. You're seeing Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and everybody running around in your head. You think the bad guy cares? Heck no. In fact, his fin comes out. So you got you to you just throw that out of your mind. And that's where your training comes in. That's why you can't train without having yourself pressure tested. I was talking to Mr. Brandon Davis the other day, and, uh, and he was so right, and I agree, and I do the same thing in my class, and I know all of our crop instructors do, is that we tell our students, look, if you can't get through these push-ups, that's okay. I don't care if you're doing it halfway. If you, if you can do just a little bit, but you got to keep going, because if you're going to give up on that push-up, you're going to give up on that guy sitting on your chest trying to beat you up. So it's the same thing. It doesn't mean you have to do it perfect. It means you never give up, all right? And that was a, a, a very good conversation. So... Um, let's do it together. We'll face this direction right here. So we're, our hands are up. I'm going to be the bad guy. The bad guy said, hey, what's your problem, man? And you're going to de escalate Practice this. And again, this is another class. Being a good victim is very important. We have drills for that, waiting for the opportunity. Okay? But if I'm giving you a hard time, you can't back up. I come in, then we need to attack the attack. So this is a scheduled attack. We come in with the left forearm, the right hand's coming. We need to move in and catch them here. So here we go, moving in, boom. Remember, your shoulders are up, your chin is tight, slightly down. It's almost an automatic head, but don't pop up, be in your shell. From here, what are your objectives? Well, our objectives are three different objectives. The first objective is control, second is incapacitate, third, terminate. We're gonna go for an incapacitation. In other words, we're gonna make this person definitely not wanna uh, continue on this fight. So when I see it, I see eyes, you do eyes. You see some, an elbow strike, open up, you do elbow, you do what you do. That's your combatives, what you feel comfortable. We're all moving in. So we're moving in, boom. Let's go. Combatives, elbow strike, knees, ah, right head, but moving forward. And then we disengage. And then we disengage. And disengage properly. Those four frameworks to self-defense connects to any unarmed self-defense there is. What's number one? I'm going to give a quiz. Number one is your situational awareness. All right? Number two is what kind of attack is it? Scheduled attack or non-scheduled attack? Your scheduled attacks, you can de-escalate a lot of those. Remember, if your mental awareness is there and you could de-escalate it using your words and your distance, well, then you have plenty of time to react to it. But maybe we can get that problem solved by using those verbal type of self-defense skills.
scheduled attack or non-scheduled attack. Non-scheduled, boom, it comes back to the mental mindset again. Once that happens, and of course you can't do the initial threat and future threat, but if it's a scheduled attack, someone grabs you, thank you. They grab your arm, they throw a punch, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see it coming and you act to it, react to it, because you know what your rules and engagement are. You know what your mental mindset is. You know what you're going to do. It can change, but just slightly. It's not hard. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a fight choreography here. It's hitting first, continue hitting with shock and awe. If it's an eye gouge, a palm hill, whatever it is, the opening's there. It presents that opportunity to you to fight and to win and to get home safe. So your objective would be what? I don't have to think about, well, am I going to, am I going to get in trouble? My objective is to incapacitate this person and get home. My objective is I'm a police officer to control this person, get them cuffed, get them in a car. Uh, if I'm a fireman, my objective is to get this person under control. So control is important. Incapacitate most of the time. And then the third one is, look, that's just a decision that we all have to make. You know? uh, God has blessed us all with a wonderful life, and some people don't care about theirs. And so that's their problem. But if you try to bring it on to me or my family and to mess with our life, then I have to do something about that. And I'll do everything I can to do that. And it can escalate. I can start with the control objective. And it escalates due to that person. Maybe they pulled a knife out. Maybe they pulled a gun out. Okay. And then the very last one is what? Disengage. Disengage. So this is what I'd like for you guys to do. Throw the haymaker punch from the right side and the left side. Got it? Go to work. I'm going to give you one and a half minutes to practice that skill. Guys, up in the middle. Here we go. Good. You can pose them in. You can do your precursors, whatever you want to do. Hey man, yeah, add a little verbal in there too. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. Good. Good. Head take down, disengage. Good. Coming back. Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. You guys are doing it at home. Let's practice. Yeah, I'm calling the cops. Yeah. 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 Go, go, go. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so now the attacker speaks. I mean, it's going to be like this. Come out, Miss Hammersley, quick, right here. Hey, what's your problem, man? Hey, what the hell's your problem? Okay, and you're going to show her the precursors. And she's going to put her hands up. Guys, let's make it as real as possible. Let's go. Hands up. Good. Hey, what's your problem? Hey, what, 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 what are you going to say? What are you going to say? Let's go. Let's go. Hey, what's your problem? What's going on? What's going on? Get out of there. Get out of there. All right, you're that. Back right, we're gonna pretend like you're not a girl. What's your problem? Right? We're gonna hit you this time. All right, never hit women. We never hit nobody else. Yeah, you're like, go, you're the bad girl. Go, go, go. Hey, what's your problem? Yeah, come on, let's see some back. Hey, I call the cops. Hey, hey, yeah. All right, back up. Now, let me tell you something. That was good. But when you come up to me and you're that close to me, you ask me what my problem is, I already hit you. I already hit you. There's no doubt about it. When you get in my space, I'm gonna hit you. So if you're walking and telling me what my problem, boom, I'm just, that's it. That's my rules of engagement. That's, and I want you to understand that. If you're close enough to hit me, I'm hitting you. I'm not going to let you get close to hit me. If I think you're going to create that extra inch to get in that range or two inches, I'm coming at you. I'm going towards you. Again, attack the attack. Okay? So I'm backing up. You continuing moving forward tells me that you're going to hit me. So that's what triggers my rules of engagement. So as you, as you continue moving forward after I use my words and de-escalate it, I know you're coming in, I'm going, I'm, I'm on fire. Simple as that. But if I can back you up early, that's fantastic. So the attack would be standing, hey, what's your problem, man? And your hands go up. You take a kind of a defensive stand. Don't walk toward me, you walk back. Create distance, distance, more, 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 yeah. And if you get away, but there's a wall behind you now. So what are you gonna do? All right, so come up. That's what you were doing, right? You wanted to want to get out. Of she didn't want to get out of there. She's smarter than me. That's why I married her. Right. So from here, I get right about here, man. That's about it. If I try to tell you I have a problem with you and I'm in here, what should you already be doing? Yeah, I know you will too. She'll be taking care of what we call it, go to work. Okay. So that punch is going here. She should shoot out of her zone into my now. Boom! Right here. And then you go to work. And this goes off of so many different things. So I said it. I'm going to get it out to you guys. 
situational awareness, you know what's going on. This is mental mindset, rules of engagement, have them, have them down. And I, you can use mine, change them up, whatever, but have them in place. Scheduled attack, non-scheduled attack. Objective, control, incapacitate, or terminate. Once you finish, you disengage, you disengage properly. All right, very good. So now we're gonna move on to any questions? I don't know, this thing take questions? I don't know. Can I hear, can anybody hear me? I heard some people coming on and then going off and stuff too. Okay, hopefully somebody's still out there watching me and they're enjoying this. <laughs> We're gonna go to the gun defense, okay? There's still people Ready? here, Master H. All right, good, good. Is that Miss Lindy? Hi, Miss Lindy. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm gonna get a drink. Can I get a drink of water real quick? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's Florida, it's pretty hot here. Yummy, yummy, yummy. If they have questions, they can type yeah. in the chat. Oh, I can't even see that phone unless I put my glasses on. I just see a blur of me standing there. Um, I'll read if they have a question. I can if read. If they have a question, you. okay, and I can tell and them I, right now. Uh, it, it, Master H seven at bellsouth.net. M A S T E R H the number seven at bellsouth.net. Three eight six. Uh, your phone just did something weird. Uh, you turned your camera off. Turn my camera off. 386-299-8784. Uh, and that's my cell phone, so don't share it with anybody, please. Okay, very good. So, again, the framework is to make it simple. And uh, as an instructor and the rest of our instructors in the organization, uh, this is going to give them an opportunity to take each section of this framework and explore it with their students. And when you do that, then you can really get down to the brass tacks and again, get your percentages up. You see things on TV and, and everything and it's great, but if you look at the true percentages, how uh, successful you're gonna be in certain situations, um, you know, any little detail that you leave out of those four will bring your percentage down of success or at least, at least possibly create you another problem if you, if you leave it out. So with these frameworks in place, it's gonna give you a higher percentage and a higher percentage isn't even 100%, know that. You're gonna take a shot, you're gonna, if somebody pulls a knife, assume you're gonna get cut. Uh, you're gonna take a shot, uh, uh, a hit, again, back to the mental mindset. And then we're gonna assume, uh, Mr. Nate, would you grab a gun please? You got one, come on out. We're gonna assume that, uh, that uh, when someone has uh, pulls a gun, that uh, that they have a, a mindset of, of doing something, whether it be carjacking, um, uh, robbery, whatever it may be. And when you watch again on YouTube, that they, they don't stress the 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 technique to where it's going to be a higher percentage for you in that real chaotic situation. So again, once you learn the skill, like the one we learned before, let's use that for an example. Once you learn that skill, then you need to have two or three people coming at you. We need to throw something out there to make you trip over. We need to do it blindfolded. I know that sounds crazy, but it makes any kind of environment that you can change any kind of thing. You can switch around, pressure test it, pressure test it, pressure test it, faster, faster, slower, all kinds of different ways. And you want to make that uh, become a part of you and get it into your, your muscle memory. Um, but gun, uh, I'm going to assume that this guy with his gun, uh, he would have shot me already. You know, if he had the gun out, uh, we're going to assume. Uh, could you pass it over to me? I, I know most. I know all of our guys in UFAP Kramaga, and if you're not in our, uh, please join us, and I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute. Um, but this is a, a basic semi-automatic, all right? Got your magazine down here. This is the loading end. This is the business end. Everybody knows it's called the trigger guard, okay? When we're doing... Uh, Handgun defense, we want to hold the gun like this. We don't want to put our finger in the trigger. It's a plus if the bad guy has a finger in the trigger, but we don't want to have that with us. You could see what would happen a lot of times, okay? Um, so we want to hold it like this. Um, come on out here for just a minute. If, I, if I'm doing a technique and it's time for me to allow this person to have a turn, for whatever reason, I need to pass the gun over. I never hand the gun. And again, no matter how you train, 
whatever you train in, you always think about every detail of is, is it gonna be something conducive to you being successful. If I practice 200 times a gun technique and then I hand that gun back over to me, he doesn't even like to take it, then I just hand the bad guy back his gun. Now, this is a case in point, Baron. Thanks, sir. Uh, police officer in front of an ATM turns around, guys, you know, and they have it filmed. He's sitting there and he's bought, he turns back around, which is a good idea. When I teach gun defense from the rear, that's a good thing to do. Turn around. All right. We'll discuss that some other time, maybe next year at the ITC. So from here, all right, he takes the gun away. Just do whatever gun technique you want to do. Boom. All right, go ahead. Takes it away. And then he hands it back to the guy. And the guy shoots him dead. Um, there was a, a case where people were being attacked in the military. And this guy, the, the firefight started. And uh, they said, why didn't you shoot? Man, everybody was, why didn't you shoot? The guy said, I didn't hear Sarge say fire. Because the Sarge on the shooting range, every single time, fire, fire. So under that stress, he reacted the way he was trained. So uh, hopefully they don't do that. All right, so again, pass it over under the arm. Simple as that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the five frameworks of successful gun defense. So how you hold the gun again. So if, if I'm a bad guy, maybe, because anything's possible, and of course Murphy always comes to the party, right? In fact, we invite him to the party. He's like, we got a chair for him. He's going to be there. And you don't know who Murphy is. You've met him before you just get going, <laughs> right? In everyday life. So from right here, this is so cool. I am a robot. I am going to shoot you in the head. That's not what it is. It's here. What's your problem, man? Give me your book. Yep, all right. Thank you, Nathan. See, that's why I paid him the big bucks. All right. So the deal is, is that we start off any of our skills to get the skill down. But remember, the skill is not the most important. Number one, a little higher. A little higher right here. Yeah. Is yours a little higher? Yeah. <laughs> the highest one here is your mindset a fact to the mental mindset that warrior mindset okay you have to have the proper mindset the intention you know not to hold back not to procrastinate the second one is opportunity opportunity can happen right away i free right now you might have to be a good victim whine a little bit fake a little bit i even tell a lot of the women in the class cry a little bit oh you're scared waiting for your opportunity. And number three is your skill, but you've got to have the skill. And the skill is not going to always come out right. And if it doesn't, we never stop. We keep going, okay? So he's holding this here. So he's going to do it this way for learning purposes. So he's going to stand here and hold it right here. So instead of going to head today, we're going to go to the body. Now, let's switch it around. I'm going to show you the skill first, and I'm going to show you the framework, okay? So if I'm here, it's, hey, man, look at this. If it's up here, I'm not going to go, hey, man, I got to practice in a mirror. I want this hand, when I decide my opportunity to make this move for right here, I want my hands as close to the weapon as possible. It just makes sense. But I want it to look obvious. I do not look at this guy in the eye. I have my head down, especially if it's up in here. I might have a chance of it going and glancing off my head. Again, I don't pop my head up just like when I was doing the 360. So right down here is where we're gonna go. So my hand, whoa, man, whoa. And if I'm out here, and again, this is how you add to the simple deal. It's like, whoa, man, my, my, my money, you want my money, okay, my son's birthday. And I just created, uh, or took up a little distance. I, I, I stepped in because I was a little out of distance where I felt comfortable, all right? So I feel more comfortable now. So, you know, I'm waiting for my opportunity. The word is small, this is gonna be perfect, okay, Nate? This is YouTube stuff, all right. So from right here, Many things I can do. I can go to the gun, I can go to the wrist, but the number one thing I want to do is what? Get out of the line of fire. If that thing goes off, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt, no doubt about it. So I gotta get out of the line of fire. I like to think of Matrix. You ever seen the Matrix movie? Walk, 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 walk. Okay, we're moving in, but we're getting out of the line of fire. Now, look what I'm doing here. I'm not moving my whole body, I'm just turning. I'm coming up on the balls of my feet, almost like, yes, my side. Yeah, that's how I connected it together. Here, because I'm what? Always moving in. So I told the guy, get out of the line of fire. So I get out of the line of fire. Now, what I'm doing is, next, this hand, we call this the T-Rex hands, okay? 
don't want to reach out here. This gun's going to be mine. Back to the mindset. So I get out of line of fire. Number two, control the weapon. And I'm going to teach this a little bit and talk about palm grips and all that. Strike if applicable. So what does that mean? If I'm here, get out of the line of fire. And this hand, see how this slides in here? I'm not grabbing down here. Slides right in here. I can even attach this, but I'm not right now. I'm bringing it in. But strike it back and forth. I need mean, strike head butt. Loosen the guy up. But if I get the gun out, which is number three, <laughs> right? Strike it back. Well, number four is to disarm. If I disarm automatically and can disengage, well, no big deal. Why am I going to fight the guy? But if there's a huck, a tuck us over the gun because he grabs with the other, anything, Murphy at the party, anything happens. Well, that happens. And usually you will strike. But I'm saying it's not a mandatory every single time. You just got to be aware of what's going on. So number one, of course, the Oda loop. We're going to do some classes on that. But we're going to do it again, YouTube style. Is to what? Get out of the line of fire. Let's turn this way. Because remember, two things are going to happen at least. I can almost guarantee you. Number one, trigger finger. When this guy sees you move, his finger is going to pull back. We've studied this. It happens. Pops. First round is going to go up. You say bang. You see me. Are you understand what I'm saying? Okay. I can't hear you, man. What? You, what? You're about to say bang. Yeah, all right. That's the odor loop. Okay? Just get in the guy's mind. It was a simple version of it. So my hand, right hand from here is going to go palm up at the wrist. Think of this. The knot in the hole. Here's the knot, his wrist. Here's the hole. Pull out. All right? I don't even have to grip hard. I'm just making that hole right here. All right? I like this. I like this, which would be palm down, but I'm going to teach this one. It comes up. What is this one called, Mrs. Hammersley? The? No, this particular gun technique. Is it body assist uh, or quick release? It's quick release. All right. So from here, we call this a quick release. I go to the hand, excuse me, to the wrist. Boom, right here. Getting out of the line of fire. Palm is up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boom, right here. And I'm turning the body. Ah. Come this way now. Number two, let's get in here a little closer. Number two is to bring this hand. Notice when I turn this hand, it's almost like it's rubbing on my side here, okay? So it's here, because I don't want it to get shot, as I grip palm up. I'm coming right on top and I'm grabbing that slide. I'm going right under the trigger guard here and gripping as much as possible, getting as much rubber on the road as I can, okay? Palm up, palm up, okay? Get out of the line of fire, control the weapon. Number three, strike if applicable. And of course, I'm moving in because the second thing that they're going to do other than pull the trigger is to move away. So when I go to get this gun, I want you to move away. Come on. When I go to get this gun, I want you to pull that gun. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see me come? Yeah. Oh, come on, move away. All right, go. All right, go on. I mean, jerk that thing. If you were here and that was your gun, wouldn't you jerk it real hard? Get, get it, get it. I want you to take that gun. I want you to take that gun. Take it. Yeah, then you're going to be about three times, right? That's what's going to happen. So what do I got to do? I got to move in. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So if you don't move in, I mean, this guy, is, he was trying to get your car. Now, now he thinks he's going to die. So he's going to try to take your life. So we move in. Five principles, again, or frameworks. One, get out of the line of fire. Number two, control the weapon. It's mine. Look where I bring it in. Look, guys. It's not out here. It's right here. Right here where I'm strong. All right? Number three, strike if applicable, loosen them up. Number four, watch the angle. I can go up this way and I'm using my body here. I can shoot it down. I just want this business and never, I keep an eye on that, never pointing at me. So I shoot it up this way. Oh, that hurt. Now this way and I can come around here. Now, once I struck, my objective is to get this thing out of the hand. Now I need to get away. So I stop here. Remember, we always have a second. Here it comes a second. Now I got a knife to deal with. All right, so I got to disengage. All right, let's move back out here. When I disengage, <laughs> when I disengage, let's go back here. When I disengage, I leave them away. A present, just like in my other uh, self defense framework, uh, empty hand. The present on this one could be striking with the gun, never with the, the magazine. All right. Boom, here, you can push the face away, you can pick it out, whatever, push them away. Once I push away, I have two disengagement options here. One is if I carry, I have personal carry, 
all right. I don't know what's this gun. I don't know whose it is. I put it away. Put it on my arm. I draw my own weapon. Be ready to go. That's an option. I'm not saying it's the right or wrong thing. I'm saying that's one of your options. And the other is, is to take this one, tap and rack it. Make sure it's ready to go. It could be a plastic gun. You don't know. I, you know I, I can tell a plastic gun pretty quick when it's in my face, no doubt. But you don't know if it's loaded or if it's not loaded. But, you know, whatever, whatever. So I don't have to assume this gun's going to help me. That's for sure. So if I'm carrying, I probably put it away and get my own. Uh, well, I came up with that. I was doing one in Texas at Mr. Creator School. Uh, and uh, somebody down there, I forget his name, asked me, said, well, can't we pull our own weapon? These guys in Texas are always there carry our weapon. Right? I said, you know, in Florida, the same way. You know, that's, you got a good point there. Yeah, absolutely. So, man, my mind changed real quick. That made a lot of sense. So, you know, you put it away. Don't throw it on the ground. Don't throw it away. Somebody pick it up, whatever. Not a good idea. Put it under your control. Go ahead and draw your concealed weapon. Um, so let's go back again. The five basic principles. Handgun. Number one is what? Say it out loud. That's right. Get out of line of fire. My hands are in this position. I turn my body just like a Maasai. I'm moving. It's almost like an automatic headbutt on me. Number two is to control the weapon. Look at the control I have. Wrist, palm up, palm up. Good. Added control, if I put my head here, it, 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 this, I can pull all day long, plus I'm moving in. I have my weapon now. It's not, you're holding it, no big deal. Notice, turn for me, notice here that I'm not doing this. No good. I don't want to turn my back to this stuff. I'm this way, I'm moving in. In fact, that's going to aid me in, in doing, because this is going to put a lot of pressure on the wrist. Is that good, Vinny? So, in a circular fashion, I'm angling off here. I'm not standing out in front of him. So from here, I'm coming off to the side a little bit. And then I like to go this angle. But try different angles. Go this one. This one's up on the grip. Go, go this one. Go this one. Try wherever you want to be. All right? What, how, what, what works best for you? But once you peel that thing out, it's coming out. So after I do my strike, if applicable, I need to get this out of his hand. I disarm. Push his face away, tap, rack, or however you want to disengage, but leave him with the present. That means don't give them the opportunity to draw another weapon on you because you stood there not paying attention. All right? One more time. What's number one? Tell me, everybody. Get out of line of fire. Oh, man, I got a big audience here. Number two, control the weapon. It's mine. Number three, ah, ah, ah. love bite. Strike the baffle. Number four, disarm. Number five, boom, boom, whatever. You know, you know, we're not trying to get in a in a tournament here or competition. But I just need to hit him and get out and disengage. Make some distance. Tap that thing. Rack that thing. Be ready to fire. Peek right. Peek left. Look behind you. Assume he's always got bad guys around him. Assume he's always got a knife or another carry. Never let your guard down. And if you get in your car, still don't let it down because they could have gotten their car and drove it there. I know it sounds crazy. It's not paranoid. But many people have leave the scene, thought it was cool. They just let their guard down, and it was continuing. They had no idea. So keep that awareness. Remember, number one is mental awareness. Ms. H, would you come on up here real quick for me, please? Yeah, it's been a blessing. Pardon me? I can't hear you. What? Oh, everybody's telling me my time's up. They know I run my classes over. It'll be like 8.30 or something like that. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And this is uh, Nathan Hammersley. What's your name? Uh, Aaron Hammersley, my beautiful wife. And Master H.D. Hammersley, thanking you for listening to us. Hopefully, we somehow gave you a, a little bit better uh, idea of uh, the UFAP Krav Maga program. I think we have. But more importantly, to maybe increase your percentages, guys, as far as self-defense. We want to invite you to come to any of our, and we're going to be having them all over the United States. I'm going to be posting some dates. We're going to, uh, to Norway, uh, Mr. Fields uh, School uh, pretty soon. Uh, West Virginia is coming up, uh, uh, instructor certification course, and then in December uh, here in Florida. Uh, we have designed our uh, number seven or level seven uh, third degree black belt curriculum. It's hot and awesome. Uh, so we have from level one to level seven as far as instructor certification. But Here's an important part, guys, is that the instructor certification, a lot of people don't want to take it just to become an instructor. You don't have to become an instructor. You could just take it as the workshop. I mean, it's a great couple of days, depends on what level you're going for. Uh, workout, I mean, you need the camaraderie and you're 
you're having a blast and continuous training, it's right up your alley. Trust me, if you're a martial artist, you love it. So maybe to attend one of those workshops, uh, one of those instructor certifications just for the workshop, for the skills. Again, you don't have to open a school or anything. It's a great, great, great way to do it. Uh, what else do I need to remember to put out there? Well, we got a lot of great things coming to you. Stay safe. Stay away from the 19, right? God bless. Let's give him a bow. Respect. Respect. We love you, Mr. Norris. Hey, Mr. Gallagher, Mr. Air Force. Thank Don't you very much. Don't go anywhere much. yet. Don't go anywhere yet. We want to have everybody turn their cameras on so we can take a group shot. So. Okay, let me start my gun in here. My hair. <laughs> my hair looking good. Look at that. All right. So everybody look at your camera. And one, two, three, cheese. Huzzah. <laughs> oh, I hear a doggy out there. It's nice. my guardian. All right, Thank so you, before Cindy. you guys head out, um, I want everybody that's online yes, to check your, your uh, VITC t-shirts. Does anybody have the Chuck Norris system logo on the back? Because if you do, you're going to win $25 to the gift, uh, the UFAC store. Does anybody online have it? Okay. Now we're looking for the look on the back. It's a little tiny one on the collar. So uh, Mr. Brown made two random t-shirts, one youth size, one adult size. So spread the word. We're going to announce it in the group. We're still looking for the winner. You got it, Crosby? No? <laughs> All right, so when you find it, take a picture, put it in our group. Um, quick reminder, deadline for all the challenge videos. If you're gonna do any of the challenges, you need to have your videos posted in the group by 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. And at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, we're gonna go live on Zoom and on Facebook. Um, the same method of getting through everything. And we're gonna announce the winners for the tournament. We're gonna announce the winners for all the drawings. So the challenge is now, Mrs. Cox is gonna draw for two free ITCs, just for participating in the challenges. Also, two $50 gift certificates, okay? So get those challenges posted by 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. These time zones are tripping me out. So anything else, Mrs. Cox? All right, then we'll see you guys tomorrow, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Thanks.